recognize Mr. Burleson from Missouri for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, for being here. Uh, according to the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, um, the Mexican cartels are the ones that were, are responsible for most of the fatal drug poisonings. Um, in 2022, it was over 107,000 people. And as you know, the data, 67% of that was from fentanyl. Um, my question is that some of this is coming, some people are coming in contact with this, some victims are coming in contact with, with fentanyl, not necessarily by taking a pill, but in everyday items like cash and food. Can you elaborate on the extent of that? Um, so uh, the powder, if you think about powder, is, is, is not really it poorly absorbed through the skin surface. Uh, of course, if you're inhaling a large dose of fentanyl, like two milligrams is a large dose for an unsuspecting person, it is potentially fatal. So it's important for us to distinguish the ability of casual versus actual. Um, but at the same time, I will say that um, if someone, anyone that thinks that they've come across in, in touch with fentanyl, it's important to get them checked out. Um, that's the important piece here. But the, do you think of the cases of, of overdoses, is there a percentage of people that are inadvertently, these are not drug users, these are people that accidentally inhaled apparently fentanyl from, from a dollar bill they, they gained? I, or? Uh, uh, thank you, Congressman. If we look at the number of people who die of the 100,000 and 70% of roughly or 80% of them are being fentanyl, what we find is that either they are still accidental oftentimes because they've taken a pill that they think is Xanax or Adderall or others. Uh, those are the majority of people. The majority, okay. Okay, so and uh, we now know that the Chinese have for a long time been supplying the precursors for fentanyl, but they're not supplying fentanyl itself. Is that correct? Um, uh, they're not. It's come down to literally zero after 2019 May uh, that we, we got, had success with the Chinese to stop fentanyl production, but then started the precursor production. So there is an ability for the United States to put pressure on China to curb some of this. And we're doing exactly that, Congressman. Okay, so, and so with that, just can you elaborate what your office is doing to work with China on not just the, on the supply of, of the precursors for fentanyl? Every meeting, literally, that have senior high officials that we have with U.S. officials with China, we're bringing this up to them to demonstrate why this is so important to us. We're also making sure that every one of those companies that we find to be illegitimately supplying precursors, we're working to sanction them. At the same time, we're also created a global coalition, launched it with 80 countries and 11 international organizations around signaling that this is the synthetic drugs are a global threat. Um, to bring China with or without China, we're going to continue. And then at United Nations, we have gotten more substances controlled than ever before with U.S. leadership to make sure that China understands that. And we are still have other tools that we will, again, work with. So speaking of other tools, in the subcommittee that we had in April, we learned that the Chinese money launderers have taken over the money laundering operations for the Mexican drug cartels. How has, has this been impacted, or how has China's strict capital flight laws motivated Chinese individuals to aid in laundering money for the cartels? We de definitely feel some of the laws, the overall of policies, are supporting the creation of these chemical, uh, these, these, these illegal and criminal networks that allow both underground Chinese banking, cash, as well as other financial institutions that are being created outside of the United States to launder money. And so what role, if you will, what role do the money launderers play? I guess they're now, they're called brokers. These are Chinese brokers. So um, President Biden executed uh, an EO14059, I believe it was, to go after beyond the Kingpin Act to the enablers of the drug trade. That includes brokers, accountants, real estate agents, lawyers of these traffickers. So what we are doing is we're going after all of those individuals. Everyone in the chain. Everyone in the chain, because it turns out sometimes it is these brokers, these accountants, that are more important than just the lowest hanging fruit. Are there any apps or software that, that they're utilizing that we, could, um, that we could pull some of that data for that we're not able to get today? 
We, FBI has a program called J-Code, the Joint Criminal Opioid Darknet Enforcement Program, and HSI has another program as well. We're working with those, but we have a uh, briefing, a uh, classified briefing on Monday. We would love to have you to talk more about this as well. I, I look forward to that. Thank you. My time has expired. Chair, now 